Yo, peoples, Kyushu92 here, and welcome back to yet another iteration of Kyushu Views Anime. Onwards to the next episode of One Piece, so let's get it started! In the last episode of One Piece, we saw the return of Sabo as he reunited with everyone back at the Kamabaka Queendom. And we also saw the vice captains of the different four generals of the four... Uh, main officers of the Revolutionary Army. And of course, everyone was happy to see Sabo fully return because he was pretty much quiet ever since his last appearance near Luluja. And now we're here with Ivankov, Dragon, and Sabo. But none of the captains are there because what Sabo's about to talk about could endanger their very lives. This reverie was tumultuous. I'll tell you all about what really happened at the Holy Land Marijuana. Who? let's go! Sabo returns, the shocking truth to be told. I've been waiting for, I've been looking forward to this episode for a minute. Kamabaka Queendom. I'm Porio Ivankov, Monkey D. Dragon, and Sabo. Ooh, three objectives, declaring war by destroying the symbol of the celestial dragons, freeing as many slaves as possible and rescuing Kuma, and destroying the food reserves in the land of the gods. Citizens of 12 countries revolted, encouraged by us, and eight of them were successful. Eight nations out of the 12 were successful in revolting. They called it the Eight Nation Revolution. But one of the countries, the Kingdom of Lelusia, mysteriously vanished. It was destroyed! Mmm, seven nations are declining to pay the heavenly offerings. Revolutionary army is attacking the government's supply routes to keep resources from reaching Marijua. Marijua, because it's located so high, people say Marijua is an unbreakable fortress because it also has Navy HQ directly in front of it. They must learn what it's like to live without money and food. <laughs> Just listen to Ivankov in the background. He's enjoying himself. Ooh, when they dispatch the Holy Knights, the real battle will start. The Holy Knights of Marijua. Flame Emperor Boy, Entei Boy. Oh, the assassination of King Cobra. From the perspective of the insurgents all over the world, everyone involved with the world government is the same. Of course, there are some kings who should be blamed for misrule, but there are also many righteous and competent kings in the world such as King Riku. Yeah, King Cobra was known as a benevolent ruler. But sometimes the truth is not always told correctly. Hmm. Oh, now explain to us the truth behind the shocking news. Remember, Dragon said that when he talked to Sabo, there would be a reckoning if this proved to be true. What I witnessed on that day, more than a month ago, during the reverie, the World Council held in the Holy Land Marijua. And we got a fire. We just got a big massive fire in Marijua. The revolutionaries are already there in their wrecking shop. Look at all of these ugly nobles. With that dumb cowlick on the top of their heads. Who they think they are? The Robinsons from Meet the Robinsons? At least the Robinsons from Meet the Robinsons that actually made it look good. Every world noble, every celestial dragon I see just makes me upset that they merely exist. Mmm. Whoa! Woo! Karasu! <laughs> Karasu! How could you take other people's lives so lightly? Karasut! Saint Pluming. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shooting him and seeing his body being f his whole body just dissipated. <laughs> New devil fruit power. Oh, Billy suits. You piece of trash. Hold on, hold on, pause. Karasu, user of the soot soot fruit, captain of the revolutionary army's northern forces. Ooh, I like Karasu. And his power. Oh! Oh! There they are. 
I feel two tremendous surges of hockey. I recognize those uh, get a statue, uh, get a sandals, and I recognize those flowers. Fujitora, real kugyu. We haven't seen Fujitora in so long. Ah, oh, I missed him. I missed him. I, I love Fujitora. I love Fujitora. I love him. I love him. He's such a wonderful character. All the nobles are running. Lindbergh! And his jetpack. If, if Vegapunk is a futuristic genius, then Lindbergh is a steampunk genius. Laser shooter. Look at that. Y'all are free. See, this is the reason why I can fully back the Revolutionary Army. There's a lot of fighting happening. So many explosions everywhere. Limber, Captain of the Revolutionary Army's Southern Forces. I don't need to pause for that. Oh, the animation has changed for Fujitora. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Are we getting like a, are we getting like a high animation scene between Karasu and Fujitora? Yes, please. Crow, so Lotus. And, he, and he's just cutting through all of them, casually. It's Morley! Morley, captain of the Revolutionary Army's Western Forces. Uh-oh. Wood-style jutsu, deep forest emergence! It's Ryokugyu! Ooh, I like how they did his transformation. A fight between a giant Ryokugyu and a giant is pretty much destroying the entire town. Now we're back with Fujitora again. He's... Fujitora's bringing down a whole meteor! Yo! And who's that standing on the outskirts of Marijua? Who are these individuals who are standing outside of Marijua that we haven't seen in years? Kumadori, Fukuro, Khalifa, Jabra, and Bluno! Former members of CP9! And they're just gone. They're just, they're gone. Blue No and his door door fruit, no doubt. We haven't seen them jokers in a minute. <laughs> and now we got Sabo. Ooh, Sabo. Sabo putting in that work. St. Roswald and Charles. Sabo, chief of staff of the Revolutionary Army. Wow, Charles and Roswald are trying to go back to the courtyard in order to try and get their hands on Shirohoshi. Again, even though Miyazgard beat the living crap out of him. Yeah, I will save Kuma at any cost. You better get it, Sabo. Oh, I forgot that body was here during the reverie. Now we got Vivi speaking to Lucci. Mmm, calling Lucci out on his hypocrisy. We'll protect you all. Did you protect Shirohoshi earlier? The answer is no. Chaka! Pell! Dude, I haven't seen you guys since Alabasta. <laughs> It's so nice seeing these faces again. Now, granted, I I know we I know we've seen them like when they were heading towards uh, Marie Joie, but it, you know it's been a while. It's been a while since the reverie started in the anime, and it was a while between seeing them in between the reverie starting with the manga. Only King Cobra is permitted an audience with the five elders. Yo. We end the chat. We end the chapter. We end the episode with King Cobra directly in front of the doors where he's about to beat the five elders. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo! The celestial dragons take advantage of their authority and do whatever they like. While even the royal families turn a blind eye to their unruly behavior, two pirates stand up to them. They who pledge to serve Luffy bring down the hammer of wrath. On the next episode of One Piece, the Holy Land in Tumult, Sai and Leo's full power blow. The God say, I'm gonna become the king of the pirates. Oh, the next episode is about to be good. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, this was a very this was an eventful episode. Now, mind you, I'm not gonna say it was Titanic on the levels of Garp raiding Pirate Island or Shanks just bodying Kid. But this was a very eventful episode showcasing what the revolutionaries were doing at Marijua. One, declare war on the Celestial Dragons by burning their symbol of power. Two, 
free as many slaves as they can, including Kuma, and three, burning their entire food supply. I don't know if any of you know just how important food is to people, um, but when you live in a section of the world that is basically so high up that you consider yourself gods to the average person, and the only way you are capable of getting sustenance and food for yourself is if it's delivered to you, and the rest of it is just stored in that area where you reside, where you don't have easy access to food just in case stores were to perhaps run out, and that's all you've ever known. Imagine having your entire food supply blown up and burned to the ground. All of your food just burned to the ground. Not only that, but the revolutionaries are intercepting supply routes from the Navy in order to keep the, the Celestial Dragons just completely starved of food. And you also have multiple nations who have tried revolting against the world government, with eight of them being successful. And this has presented an even bigger problem for the Celestials, simply because those nations have refused to give them heavenly tribute as well. So things are not looking good for the Celestial Dragons. You got Karasu, who reveals that he's the user of the Soot Soot fruit, which is a Logia type of devil fruit. And it's kind of unique when you think about it, because this is the first time we see a Logia user use their power in a ways where they can separate and it can operate autonomously from that the, the user's body. Because he's capable of not only having people ride multiple large crows made of soot of himself, but he's also capable of communicating to people with these crows. Which makes it very, very versatile when you think about it. And this is the first, this is the first Logia that we see in the series who's capable of creating constructs that work, you know, separate from the body. They continue working despite Kanasu being in a different place. So that's unique. I love that. And then we got all the uh, we got all the members of the Revolutionary Army, except for Bello Betty, who are taking part in, you know, fighting Fujitora and Ryokugyu. Uh Fujitora versus Karasu, and then Morley versus Ryokukyu. Of course, with them two jokers being as big as they are, they're kind of causing a lot more collateral damage to the area rather than, you know, some of the Celestials getting to safety. Lindbergh is doing the most beneficial work, which is freeing as many of the slaves who are there and telling them to wait on the eastern side of town. And all those people that escaped with them wound up being at the Kamabaka Queendom uh, with everyone else. So... That's good. That's a nice, that's, that's such a good, that's such a nice thing to see. But we also have Vivi, who's currently being, you know, watched over by Lucci. We see the members of former, uh, the former members of CP9, Fu uh, Fukuro, Kumadori, Khalifa, uh, or Khalifa, if you want to pronounce it that way, Bluno, and Jabra. We haven't seen them in the series officially. Of course, we've seen certain members, such as uh, Bluno, Bluno, and Khalifa, due to uh, their appearance in One Piece Film Red. But canonically, this is their first appearance of seeing everyone else in, in the CP9 crew, other than Kaku and uh, Luchi. So it's nice to see them, and they're just they're just pretty much spectating everything that's going on. But now we have King Cobra at the end, who's about to have an audience with the five elders. Buckle up. That's all I'm saying. But you guys let me know what you thought of this episode as a whole. I don't want to keep continuing talking because I would rather you guys speculate about what's about to happen for all of you anime-only viewers. But yeah. I'm done. I'm done. I, there's nothing else I need to say. This was a pretty all right episode. Pretty all right episode. It's back. It's good to be watching episodes of these again after we had that uh, filler episode last week. But yeah, let me know what you thought of this episode. And for you anime only viewers, enjoy. Trust me, enjoy. But yeah, I'm done. Hope you all enjoyed. Can't wait to see you all in my next video. Like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, because I am always looking forward to entertaining you. So have a fantastic day, and once again, as always, later peoples! And thank you to all of my moderators and members who help make what I do possible.